For months, historic wildfires torched our state, forcing many people to leave at a moment's notice. Found a message that said, you need to get out of there now, mandatory evacuation. The officer said that it appeared that the fire was coming our way. Like, it was growing exponentially. Uh, minute by minute. It's just scary, the unknown. Denver 7 Gibbs and hundreds of you jumped in to help with food, with clothing, and in some cases, with manpower. When you got friends and you got neighbors and people willing to help out, you know, anything's possible. Well, tonight we are providing a helping hand for the people who need it most. It just really shows you how good people are, and there are so many good people. And the response touched so many hearts here at Denver 7 and across Colorado. And we'd say we were overwhelmed by the generosity. I mean, we were, but also we have come to expect it from Coloradans who care so deeply about their neighbors. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn joins us live tonight. Russell, you spent the day hard at work delivering supplies all over Larimer County. Yeah, that's right, Jessica. Big day here in Larimer County as we were able to donate food, blankets, and all kinds of other items, including, check it out, all of these tools, these shovels and rakes from McGuckin Hardware over in Boulder. These are the volunteers working behind the scenes here in Loveland right now at the Seventh-day Adventist Disaster Response Donation Center. They're working to organize and categorize all of those donations. We have some video to show you from earlier. Five Walmart stores here in Larimer County made significant donations, nearly two truckloads of food, bedding, and other items. And then again, as I mentioned, McGuckins over in Boulder helped us out today by giving us a 10% off, 10% off of everything we bought from rakes to shovels, barbecue grills to gloves. And then just a bit ago, this presentation to the United Way. I'm Russell Haythorn at the Larimer County Donation Center for Wildfire Victims and on behalf of Denver 7 and our generous viewers, we'd like to donate this check for $75,000 to the United Way of Larimer County and this is Claire Bouchard with the United Way. Claire, this is all yours. Well, thank you so much, Russell. Thank you so much, Denver 7 News viewers. Because of your generosity, this money will really help families that have been impacted by the fires up in Cameron Peak and the East Troublesome Fire. We are a long-term recovery fund, and we found that um, unmet needs are really emerging about a year or six months after an incident. And so these funds are really going to help families rebuild their lives. Thank you so much. And this as well, we're back here live now at the Seventh-day Adventist Donation Center, and they're working so hard to make sure families who lost everything in the wildfires have clothes, have blankets, have pillows. They're organizing things right now, and I'm told this donation center will be open for about the entire month of December up until December 28th. So, so that is certainly good news for the wildfire victims. Also, a big shout out to two men in a truck moving today. They helped us get all of these items from the hardware store, from those Walmart locations to the donation center here in Loveland. We're live in Larimer County tonight. Russell Haythorn. Back to you guys. Just incredible. Thank you, Russell. And we received almost $300,000 <laughs> in donations, and we're committed to keeping that money local. Now, five Larimer County stores chose to help out when they heard what we were doing. Those businesses donated thousands of dollars worth of materials to help the families, including some firefighters who lost everything during the wildfire season. We had to pay movers to help deliver all of these donations, and they made multiple trips. Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen continues our team coverage now with a look at one family who is grateful for the help. All right, let's go do some Christmas shopping. In the spirit of the season. All right, we're starting with the Dutch oven. A shopping spree to replace what was lost. There we go. Using your generous donations to Denver 7 Gives, we pick up the supplies. Shopping. That help make a house. A home. So they made their list. We checked it twice. Add in a little holiday spirit. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! And we are heading to the mountains. Where Clint and Stacy Young deserve a break. In October, the log cabin Clint hand built 20 years ago was right in the path of the Cameron Peak fire. We were voluntarily evacuated on Labor Day weekend. And we packed up a bunch of stuff. Were you able to get everything that was important to you? I got her. <laughs> <laughs> they made it, their home didn't. 
Now they're determined to rebuild. Are you ready to see the surprise? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. And Denver 7 Gives gets to help. Holy cow. Hand mixer. With a car full of things they said they needed and a few just for fun. We wanted you to have a little holiday spirit, plus thoughtful donations to warm the spirit. This is from a sewing circle out of Johnstown. They actually handmade these blankets. I love blankies. Yes. <laughs> but as they rebuild, they also need supplies. This check is to help pay off some of the money you've already spent on building supplies. Wow. Holy cow. Awesome. Thanks to Denver 7 Gives donations, a GoFundMe, and their neighbors, this garage rebuild is well underway. I was absolutely amazed that Denver 7 uh, Gives even asked me what I needed and what I wanted. It just really shows you how good people are. And there are so many good people. And it's truly amazing. The young say that is what keeps them going because this is where they want to stay. Well, it's home. It is. You know, anywhere else just doesn't feel like home. It doesn't quite look like home yes. and used to look right, but, but it will. Oh, I love it. We needed some Christmas around here. For now, the Youngs are staying in this camper on the property as they rebuild. Clint says it's going to take him a couple of years to do this again by hand. Once again, a labor of love. In Larimer County, Jacqueline Allen, Denver 7. Thank you, Jacqueline. You still have time to get in on the giving. To make a tax deductible donation, just head on over to the DenverChannel.com and click Denver 7 Gives. Then find our wildfire fund on the drop down menu. 100% of the proceeds helps those in need in our communities. You all are incredible. Thank you so much. All right, on to COVID now. Well, it's still spreading rapidly in our state. More than 4,000 new cases reported tonight. So one in eight people now getting tested is positive for the virus. 1,779 hospital beds are in use tonight by COVID patients or people suspected to have it. Our state set a record for hospitalizations last Wednesday. The number, though, has been trending in the right direction ever since. And this evening's Colorado's first gentleman, Marlon Reese, is in the hospital after his virus symptoms worsened. Both he and the governor tested positive over a week ago. Governor Polis said he, though, has not experienced additional symptoms. All of the Colorado high school sports schedule is to start in 2021 will be delayed due to rising cases. The Colorado High School Activities Association announced the delays today and they want to push back the start date for season B sports by one week from January 25th to February 1st. This impacts basketball, skiing, wrestling, ice hockey, spirit and girls swim as well as dive. It also pushes back the start of season C and D sports, which includes lacrosse, soccer, gymnastics and track and field. In the last week alone, the U.S. reported more than 1.3 million COVID-19 cases. That is more than any other week on record. Roughly 129 Americans now test positive every minute. And it could get worse. So you have a surge upon a surge. And then before you can handle that, more people are going to travel over Christmas. Well, Pfizer's vaccine will be deliberated by an FDA advisory committee Thursday, and then shortly after that, it could get emergency use authorization and be distributed by the states. It's already gotten the green light in the UK. This afternoon, the New York Times reported the U.S. only ordered about 50 million doses. That's enough for 15 percent of the population. We need about 75 percent of the population to be vaccinated to stop the spread. The New York Times says our country won't be able to get more of the Pfizer's vaccine until next spring at the earliest. A Health and Human Services spokesperson says the federal government is evaluating five other vaccine candidates right now. Our state economy won't add enough jobs next year to offset the losses this year. Uh, CU Boulder Research just research, uh, released that finding today. And they say this all hinges on a vaccine. The researchers believe in 2021 our state will get back less than a third of the jobs lost to COVID in 2020. They are counting on a rebound in the leisure and hospitality industry, which is projected to add almost 20,000 new jobs next year. And that includes restaurants. Many, as you know, have closed dining rooms to due to tighten uh, tighter coronavirus restrictions as we head into the winter. The researcher writes, this is a quote, it will continue to be bumpy road as long as the economy goes through rolling lockdowns. The expectation is a stronger second half of the year. Colorado families are struggling to make ends meet and federal help is badly needed. Today, there are some signs of progress on Capitol Hill as stimulus talks drag on. Congress is planning to vote Wednesday on a one week spending bill that would only keep the government open while legislators hammer out a deal. 
And as for the deal itself, the Associated Press reports direct payments are out. So don't expect a $1,200 stimulus check. But a $300 boost for unemployment benefits is in. The total price tag is likely to come in below $1 trillion. Wow, just beautiful conditions out there right now, but a chilly change is on the way. One restaurant raided by the state plans a peaceful protest of the governor's restrictions. It's in a family establishment. It's mom and pop shop. We are taking a closer look at how the pandemic is impacting the hospitality industry and why some laid off workers are getting their benefits cut. <laughs> 79 years after Pearl Harbor, our nation again pays tribute to the patriots who lost their lives. 